Hi everyone, Joey here to talk to you today about Weblog Analytics or WLA, a new product Alert Logic released on the 2nd of September. Now, what we're looking at right here is the dashboard for WLA. WLA doesn't actually have a console UI or user interface. It primarily lives in the back end at Alert Logic. So the proverbial UI for WLA is the dashboard. Now, MDR customers uh, know, should know by now, that the dashboard is the default view. So when you log in in the morning, dashboards should be the first thing that you see. Now, Threat Summary is the first dashboard, so this will probably be the first dashboard that you see. If that's the case, and you're looking to perform analysis on web attacks that came in or were detected overnight by WLA, then we just need to come down here and quickly select WLA. Now I'm showing the last seven days of data. I generated some fresh incidents this morning and I have a couple from last week uh, that are still lagging in here as well. We can very easily change this to 14 days or 30 days. We can also set a custom range here. So I'm gonna go back to seven days. Now let's look at the use cases for the dashboard. As I mentioned, this is the entry point for WLA or the primary UI for WLA. So as a security analyst, one of the first things that I want to understand is how many incidents or what incidents, what has happened since my last shift ended. This is easily, e easily done with the WLA dashboard. I come in and I see I have five new incidents since my last shift, assuming of course I disposition incidents uh, by the end of each day. So I've got five incidents. The next thing that might be interesting to me from a use case perspective is who are the top attackers? Who are the busy bees that are attacking our web applications? And I can see that easily with this widget. I can also export this information to CSV, which I can use to import into other systems like Splunk maybe, or I can uh, disseminate these throughout my organization. Maybe there's uh, somebody else that I wanna hand this off to, a firewall administrator, for example, because we wanna block these IP addresses. So I can export this to CSV and easily get that sent to someone else on the team or in my organization. Next thing I'm going to be interested in is which applications are being attacked. And we can see the top attacked hosts here, along with the attacker IP uh, and the count and the percent of total and some other interesting dashboard information. Next thing that I might be interested in, maybe I don't do business all over the world, or maybe there's not a reason for some countries to be requesting information from my web applications, much less attacking them. So maybe I want to look at the country of origin so that I can block ASNs, for example, uh, if there's a country that I don't do business with and I see that there's a large number of attacks or significant attacks coming from that country, perhaps I choose to just block the ASN altogether uh, with another technology, by the way. WLA is a detection technology, not a blocking or protection technology in the strictest sense of the word. Next thing I might be interested in, although this isn't as useful as it will be in subsequent releases, I might want to know what kind of attack trends uh, we're seeing. And really, to make this super useful, it needs to be attack trends by attack subclass rather than class. That way we can dive below application attacks. So that's going to be coming up in our next release. Now, the last widget that's interesting on this page from a use case perspective is one that solves a question that we receive from lots of different customers and partners. And that is, in the absence of incidents, how can I communicate to upper management that we're still seeing value from our alert logic investment? And to answer that question, it's really by providing you visibility into the abstraction layer that we've created on top of the events that are ingested from various uh, sources, things like firewalls, uh, firewall logs, AWS CloudTrail, web server access logs in the context of WLA, IDS events and things like that. The way that the Alert Logic backend works is we have your typical ingest of events like various other systems like SIMS, right? They do event ingest as well. But those events come into the system and without the abstraction layer that we've created, there could potentially be one for one, one event, one incident, one event, one incident, and that creates alert fatigue and all kinds of other problems. So we have this abstraction layer that actually looks at the events and creates observations from notable events. This is the first filter, filtering out the noise from the signals that we're getting. 
And then we have a bunch of incident design logic that is included where we begin to look at the observations themselves. We begin to match them against thresholds and logic counters and things like that to increase our confidence in the efficacy of the event, that it is a true attack, that it's something that we need to create an incident for and requires a response action and or investigation. All right, so that's how the dashboard works. Now, from here, what do we wanna do? Well, the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is investigate the incidents. So I can click this button here and it'll load incidents in the same tab uh, as the dashboard, or I can shift click on Windows or command click on Mac. And then that's gonna open our incidents window here. Now, I've got seven days. This matches the filter that I put on the dashboard. So I'm looking at the last five incidents that were created. These were created on the 3rd of September. These were, I was a bad boy and didn't disposition these. Uh, these were created today on the 8th of September. So let's just look at one of these incidents. Now, if we look in here, this investigation report is gonna tell us a lot of different useful things about this particular incident. Now, the reason that there are multiple attack types in the title is because this was detected, these, a series of requests were detected as web reconnaissance slash attacks. Now, everyone knows that there is a methodology that attackers follow, at least that successful attackers follow. And the vast majority of the hacking or penetration testing methodologies out there lead with enumeration or reconnaissance. We need to figure out, we need to plan our attack, right? So the first thing that we need to do is discover the attack surface and the extent of the attack surface. One of the ways that we do that is with vulnerability scans, banner grabbing, and things like that. These are all reconnaissance activities. So instead of just calling this a web recon attack or an unauthorized vulnerability scan, which we do also detect, um, there were a large number of different types of attacks and a mix of reconnaissance and targeted attacks that were in here. That's why we call it web recon slash attacks. And we can see there was two applications that were primarily attacked by this particular scan. Uh, and we can see the CWEs for the attacks that were launched. Here we can see the user agents and look at that. So this is a well-known application security testing tool. It's called Nikto. It's been around for a really long time. Nikto is a great tool, really, really easy to use and extremely well documented. Uh, it is also um, easy to tell that it's Nikto, particularly if there are no evasions that have been enabled. We can see the various tests that were run. We can see the test IDs. This is super useful for correlation and various other things, uh, particularly if you're testing your own applications. Um, so we've got that information. We've got path traversal attacks were noted in the log in addition to uh, all of these other issues. The path traversal attack was the most prevalent attack. That's why it's listed here. And you can see the source IP address of the attacker. This was basically the apex observation. This is one of the observations. This is clearly directory traversal. And that's why our path traversal, directory traversal, which is why it's listed as path traversal. Now, the next thing that I could do, so this is definitely web reconnaissance. It is an unauthorized vulnerability scan. Well, pr presuming, of course, that this is not an authorized user. This could be an authorized vulnerability scan, in which case uh, we maybe you want to detect this, maybe you don't want to detect this. You can, you, can, uh, you can determine what your preference is uh, at your leisure. Uh, so the next thing that I might want to do is just go ahead and follow the recommendations. So I, I feel pretty good about this finding. Uh, we can go and look at the different CWEs, look at the recommended guidance for remediating these things. But maybe I want to do a little bit further investigation first uh, before I do any kind of firewall blocks or shuns, anything like that within my environment. So if I want to investigate this a little bit further, I can choose the evidence section here and now we can see all the various observations. These were the observations that were created from the events and then if we drill down into the observations we can see the actual log message that generated the observation. So this is the notable event that was, that was observed and then ultimately once thresholds and everything like that were passed uh, our design logic executed and we created an incident from this. 
So I can look and see this is exactly what the log message looks like. I can see the some of the properties of the log of the message. And if I want to look at that further, I can just click here and open the details in our search console. So that's how you would investigate an issue. Um, you can look at, uh, let's look at search real quick. So one thing that we could do is if I want to investigate, I can come down here to investigate and I can open search and let's, so I've got three, I actually only have three applications in my lab. So let's say I want to look, I want to look at a particular application. So let's say I only want to look at this app right here, Mutility Day. And I want to look at attacks that have been received or incidents that have been received the last six hours. So I want to see log messages for the last six hours. And we'll quickly search through and this is going to pull in all the various log messages for Utility Day, which resulted in the analysis that in turn resulted in the incidents being created. So now I can see these are all the log messages that have come in for the last six hours. Now, this is something that is important to look at. This is one of the reasons I wanted to show this. This is six hours, 15,250 results. Now, I have constrained this search to just the host header for this application, which means in the last six hours, there have been over 15,000 log messages generated uh, from requests to this application. And out of those 15,000 log messages, a significant number of them were attacks. Yet out of this, if I go back to my dashboard and look at Utility Day, I've only got one incident. That's our incident design logic at work, preventing you from being inundated by alert fatigue. All right, so that's the operational aspect. So real quickly, I wanted to kind of step through deployment and, and just talk about that a little bit. There's two pieces to deploying WLA. The first piece is your web server infrastructure. You're going to want to configure your log format to include maximum value fields. That's because WLA has machine learning. And machine learning requires date and time stamps. It requires refers. It requires user agents. It requires the X forwarded for header to provide maximum value. We also need the X forwarded for header to know what the true attacker is, what the true client IP address is when there are load balancers, CDNs, proxies, and other upstream devices that are in line in front of this application. So we don't want to get the inside interface of our load balancer. We want the actual, uh, the, the IP address of our inside interface of our load balancer. We want the actual IP address. So we need XFF for that. So the first thing that we need to do is configure our web server infrastructure to ensure that our, our web servers, Apache, Nginx, IIS, et cetera, are logging correctly and logging all the fields that we need for WLA to provide the maximum value. That's the first step. Second step is we need to collect those logs. So we're gonna come in here and I just come into my deployment uh, and I'm gonna go into application logs and then here I can collect various types of logs. Now, WLA is a web log analytics solution, so you're gonna find templates for Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, obviously those things are not in scope for WLA. Apache, Nginx, and IIS, all in scope for WLA. So you'll fill out this form here, you'll save it, and then you'll end up with policies like this, which show where you can collect. Now, uh, extra credit, I also happen to be the product manager for our connectors capability that we released on September 2nd. Connectors, uh, AKA integrations, connectors give you the ability to integrate with messaging and ticketing systems. So what I've done here is I've created a connection to JIRA and what, what this is gonna do is enable me to create a new issue in JIRA every time a WLA incident is created on the alert logic side. Why is this important? Well, from a workflow perspective, if you're using JIRA or ServiceNow or whatever for a ticketing system to centrally manage all of your workflows and the tasks that your staff are working on, then right now you have a manual workflow 
that creates a JIRA issue when you're notified of a new incident in the Alert Logic console. Connectors gives you the ability to automatically create the issue and route it to the appropriate place. You can see the project key here. I'm routing this to a particular board uh, inside of JIRA. So this is two steps also to configure this. The first thing you'll do is configure the connector. And then the next thing you'll do is configure notification utilizing that connector. And that's what we've done here. So we've done WLA incident notification. You can see I just created it today. And we are creating a ticket in the event that anything is escalated to us or we receive an incident of low, medium, high, or critical severity. There are no email users subscribed, although we could easily email uh, along with this. So we can do an email notification and a create an issue inside of JIRA at the same time. And this is the connector that we just created that we're going to send this to. So what does that look like when it's happening? Remember, these were the top three, where are we at? The top three incidents that we had were from today. Unauthorized Vuln scan, code injection, attacking, attack generating 500 type server errors. Now let's look at the issues that were created. Attack generating 500 type server errors right here and we put the incident investigation report inside the body of the ticket. This link will take you back to the Alert Logic console as you can see in the lower left there. And we've got one issue per incident that was created. Pretty cool stuff.